else and he doesn't own it. Um, and that's three different chucks. That's why we look for secondary clues. So that way we know who, which Charles we're actually talking to in the event that one of them shows up. The son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. That's pretty boring for us because, I mean, it's a big deal for South Carolina, obviously, but we're ghost hunting. If I don't bring it up, they usually do it for me very angrily through the spirit boxes. So we're going to move on and we're going to talk about Eliza anyway. Eliza, she married Charles at a young age according to today's standards. If you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, you're not going to hear numbers like 12 and 13. She was correct. Her father didn't die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to this face. One of those gifts happens to be the plant seeds of indigo. Indigo is a plant that makes a blue dye that makes her blue jeans blue. Some of you are wearing it tonight. If you guys have been in town for at least a day, you've seen the word indigo somewhere, I promise you. However, she didn't know what to do with the seeds when she got them. She had to learn from her slaves how to keep it cultivated. It's obviously not hot here all the time. When she figured it out, she moved to a cash crop plantation just south of here, got a hold of her dad and said, rice plantations are going downhill in price. We can make a killing with this indigo. And now we have an international businesswoman during colonial times. This is something absolutely unheard of. So let's kind of get into the weird stuff because that's the boring business stuff of Eliza, right? You know, yeah, give me some weird shit. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to start with yours. Um, so I'm going to kind of give you a series of questions to focus on and kind of see what we're you know, going to get out of it. Um, so after Eliza's death, she's pretty well open about it. Um, you can ask her how old she was when she got married, what she died from, what year she died, where she's buried, uh, what president was a pallbearer at her funeral. Like these are all questions that we commonly get the answers to. So I'm going to leave you with those, with your questions. I know you're looking at me like, holy cow, this is a lot. So the children, we're going to, no, let's skip um, we're going to go after what happened to the mansion. It's obviously not here anymore, right? There's no mansion. So, and then when did that happen? It's a very, very specific date. Um, the other thing, I would, let's go ahead and give you the marriage questions as well, because I can see you got your hands full. I want to kind of keep things a little bit simpler, because you're going to be watching his meter too. Um, so, what happened to the mansion? When did that happen? And how old were you when you got married? So let's hope that we can get some answers out of that. Um, again, we're, we're in spaces where there's cars. We're not going to go in between vehicles. We're not going to go near cars. And we've got people coming by, going to their vehicles, and cameramen. I heard 'Cause I'm, I'm those are really small and I send them to YouTube so that way we can watch them however we want to. So I fill them up on a nice big computer. An average flight for this location is about eight to ten has already gotten there twenty five, so any other colors? Nope. Uh, right. You are on 
white. It was on white, Dad. I saw orange on your device. Do you think you can handle two of these? Yeah. You have to tell me what numbers these are. Okay. Think you can tell me what numbers show up? Let me know what numbers show up on there. Told you I keep them busy. <laughs>
and back to the back. Come on, Danny. I'm saying five on that is because we do have a lot of lampposts around us that will kind of give us that much EMF over this way between like five to six. All right, so where the heck are we? This is Philadelphia Alley. Every tour comes down here because it used to be called Jewelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur. So we all tell the story of one specific duel. What's funny is it's normally super quiet down here, which is one of the reasons why I love coming down here. I, I normally don't hear those kind of cars. Um, but at any rate, so you're going to get a little bit different history out of me because they're just doing the campfire marshmallow stories you're actually ghost hunting we don't explore this space like what we did with the uh, pinkney mansion site um, we kind of get this started because we're going to get bleed over from this location at our next location so here's how the story goes there's a doctor that moves down here from rhode island by the way not coincidence just so you know it happens down here a lot he moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance amanda amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents She's an attorney, helping her out with all of this cash. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. Tells Amanda to get rid of the doctor. So Dr. Ladd, to prove that he's not after her money, comes down here to Charleston. The coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a good start to his stay in Charleston. Somebody was walking by, though, and seeing he was about to be robbed and killed. His name was Ralph Isaacs. I stop on Ralph because he has the same initials as where the doctor came from. The letters R.I. show up on spirit boxes all the time. I also have a digital Ouija board in my bag, which is the reason why I bought it was for this location. We still get the letters R.I. from that while we're in this location as well. It's very interesting, but we always need a secondary clue. It's two different characters, same set of clue. So we need a secondary one to verify. But anyway, back to Ralph. He tells the doctor, you don't want to stay here, man. I know this guy. He's going to try to kill you, and you're going to be dead and gone. But I got some friends at 59 Church Street. We've heard the word church. Um, we're also next to St. Paul's Church, which could go either way, depending on another clue. However, you could stay with my friends at 59 Church Street, rent a room, and you'll be safe. The doctor took him up on the offer, and they became friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. He's proving his point that he's not just after Amanda's money. He becomes known as the Whistling Doctor because Amanda got wind of this and she's moving down to Charleston so they can get married. Every haunted city you're ever going to visit in the future has a cliched whistling ghost. I'm just running around. But anyway, um, back to the doctor. Dr. Vlad and Ralph are to play together, but they can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money because it's better seats. That's just the way the hierarchy works. So they have to talk about these plays on the way home. They're talking about Richard III one night. They were arguing over the new actress that was here. Dr. Ladd thought she was fantastic. Ralph is not going to be happy. The argument gets even more heated when Ralph is insulting the doctor's fiance back home in Rhode Island. By the way, the camera is now on your right, which means it's going to be upside down. Yeah, stop your video again. <laughs> Always on your left. Um, they go their separate ways, but Ralph, like I said, has friends here. So he goes to his friends at the newspaper, and he puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a year of disgrace to society, sir. Kind of mentality. Dr. Ladd saw the ad and rebuttaled with, let's go to Julie's Alley. Let's settle this once and for all. So they came down, he took her ten paces, he turned, and the doctor pointed his gun in the air and shot. He didn't want to kill his friends, because he had to have the courage and bravery to show us who was fighting. But Ralph, there was one shot. He puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. Dr. Ladd drops to the ground, but didn't die. His friends picked him up, carried him home to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. Probably refused it because he was a doctor himself and just wanted to do that leg voice, voice recording. Listening for those whistles in the background. If you're going to go through all the way to the end of this alley on your own, you need your voice recorders on your phone, but keep in mind every local knows the story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street throws a whistle down the alley. I do it every single night. I have to pass the alley every day I came out of my car. I always throw a whistle, especially since it has to be back. We're going to talk about that. So that's the fucking much of the story. Come on over, no, you don't want to miss this. <laughs> <laughs> so, this alley didn't always go all the way through this way. We're probably standing right about the area where it was cut off. The reason why is because this is where they kept the livestock for the city of Charleston. It was called Cow Alley. We do get the word cow down here a lot, just so you know. But anyway, those bricks down on that side, those are older because these bricks weren't here yet. Those ones on that side are uh, sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child in one, in one of those bricks, along with fingerprint swipes on others. I used to always take my groups all the way through just to show off the history. We all need to see it to show how far we've come away from slavery. However, 
I was a little bit out of balance when I first started doing this. And every group wants to start getting a reading from that brick. I treat that brick the same way I do a grade. That kid's not staring at the brick in the axe box, right? That's the last place you're going to find it. November 26th of 2020, my entire group huddled around that brick trying to get a reading. I'm trying to scurry them along because of my reasoning, and it's outside the kitchen window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. Yeah, I was out of bounds. I wasn't supposed to be down there. We're not allowed in this neighborhood. So, the new neighbor came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because she was on the floor that night and dad's getting yelled at. Yeah, so we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I, didn't, I don't score Thanksgiving because I worked in retail management for over 20 years, mainly for Walmart. So you can imagine the pain that I, I don't ever work for Thanksgiving again. Yeah, I'm a daily member. Um, so the next day, November 28th, I got a phone call asking me to go down halfway or to reroute my group. I told my team that night, because I had another full tour, it's Black Friday, we're going to reroute, but I don't really believe in this story. I'm not a big pirate person. Um, I'm a vampire guy. So we'll kind of see what comes out of this pirate thing and see what happens. So before we left, somebody heard the name Anne on a spirit box. What I did not tell them is who we were going to be investigating. The famous female pirate, Anne Bonnie. So I was like, all right, we'll see what else happens. I get down there, I told them what little bit I did know about pirates in Charleston. The next person on a spirit box hears the number 300. I don't know what that means in real time. The next day I do the research. We were there November 28th of 2020. And Bonnie's trial for piracy, November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300 year anniversary of her pirate trial. So I keep taking you all back there. And I've read more damn books on pirates than I ever wanted to in my entire life. I'm trying to piece together a factual investigation based on pirate lore. So it is a worst or best case scenario. We're either going to have a lot going on or nothing going on. That's one of those fates. Again, I can't make the ghost do anything. We will get bleed over from this location, just so you know. Um, but again, I used to take my teams all the way through here, and we had a couple other spots that we hit after this, but obviously you can't take me down there. We're going to be doing this new route from when I had to change things up back in 2020. So Anne's Bonnie, did she die here in Charleston? No. <laughs> she was tried in Jamaica. Correct. Okay. Where did she die? Nobody knows. Could be here, could be Virginia. Because I was reading on Wikipedia that she possibly died here in Charleston. Yeah, there's like 25 different versions of what that. Yeah. Okay. So everything we're going, and that's a good point. So everything we're going to be discussing about Anne Bonnie at the next stop came from a minimum of two resources. I, again, I have a whole bookshelf of nothing in my library of nothing but pirates and Anne Bonnie. Right, it's nothing. Right. It's all. It is all pirate lore. Yeah. So again, and that's the whole point. We will have fun in that space. I won't give you like a plethora of questions like what we did at the Thinking Mansion site because you guys are getting the gist of how to listen to these. Um, but I will give you a few things that I left out on purpose so you have something to work with. There'll be no more subliminal tricks. Um, I promise you on that. <laughs> so, um, have we heard anything, Sean, about what we've been standing here? Oh, Saturday. Okay. I want to say that the duel, according to the 10 days prior, um, was a Wednesday. So I don't even think that the date that he died, I think that was probably like Friday or Saturday. I'm looking at the calendar properly. I know the exact date that he died, but there's no exact date of when the duel actually occurred. There's always different versions of that, whether it was 10 days or 4 days. I get a lot of info during that week of the year, just because it kind of stirs things up and the dates are relevant, but I don't have an exact 10 or 4 if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. So I will be writing down Saturday what was heard here. Did you get any numbers, Danny? Did you see anything come up? You didn't shout anything, so. Um, two, and, um, um, four, and, I two, and three. Two and a three. Got it. Like I said, I want to get above five in this location. Jenny, did you hear anything? I know, you, sometimes it's hard to focus on me and that at the same time. Oh, oh he's, he's lighting up. Yeah, there's also the uh, lamps. Yeah, he's got a little bit of lamps around here. Yeah, see that right there? Yeah, and it's pretty steady. Usually when it's yeah. steady or in a pulse or rhythm, it's usually coming from something mm. man-made. Okay. I'm going through the cemetery. I'm going through for research to verify dates or anything like that. Um, and that goes for any investigation I'm on. But when I'm going through there and I'm running a spare box and I'm going up detectors, which usually is pretty minimal. Um, are we near two cemeteries right now and some names pop up of people relevant in these cemeteries? Sure. Am I going to get much more than that? Sure. Probably not. I'm not going to get any details about their life. I'm not going to know that they, you know, planted indigo. I'm not going to know that they got into a bar fight or a duel. You know, I'm not going to know those details. So the names are great. I want the deets. Like, that's kind of how I work. So I want those very specific things that are going to pop up. So we're going to be discussing that little tiny building over there with the crosses on it. So that's, those are not crosses, by the way. Those are earthquake bolts. We talked about the earthquake that we had here in 1886 earlier. But the reason I bring those ones up is because those are the oldest earthquake bolts that we actually put in here in Charleston. 
if you don't know what those are, they're basically turnbuckles. So there's a turnbuckle that goes through the roof, and there's a bolt on either side. So if you have another earthquake, like what we did in 86, you can turn those, and it'll tighten the building back up so it doesn't incur any further damage. You guys have been seeing them all over town, um, in the shape of pineapples, lion heads, those kind of things. Just part of the Charleston charm, because they don't actually work. Every Californian I get on this tour will laugh their ass off at me, because that is not a thing anymore. They don't work. Um, but again, those are the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston put in. Why? Because that's the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. Which is part of the reason why we're here. Ann Bonnie actually came here during the time that this building was being constructed. And it would be something what I would call a familiar. You guys watch the TV shows and that kind of thing, and you've seen them use a teddy bear to attract a child ghost? It's the same principle. This is just something familiar. Most of us are adults. Let's put two and two together. There's going to be a female in his quarters cannot have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. He's eventually going to drop her off in Cuba before Cheers she starts to sail. So if he drops her off, these are friends of mine, they'll help you out. Come back later and we'll figure it out. Goes and has the baby, returns with no child. No amount of my research can find out what happened to the baby. That's not the significant part of the story. He comes back dressed as a girl. This makes Zach pretty angry. And while she was away giving birth to his baby, he captured another pirate crew. They're down below deck. He's going to go flirting with that pirate crew to make him even more mad. We're on guy number three, in case you lost track. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a male, to be part of the pirate crew, the Calico Jack Captain. This is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Her and Mary became friends, possibly lovers, we're never going to really know for sure, but the British, they found out where they were. They send a whole fleet of ships to take down one pirate ship. Anne and Mary, rumor has it, are the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight with their one bullet flint box. Probably because they don't know how to use a cannon jet, they haven't been pirates for very long. Now, obviously two ladies with flint locks are not going to take on a fleet of ships. They get arrested. And as they're being arrested, she looks at her captain, her bow, Calico Jack, and she says, You should have fought like a man, you should have been hanged like a dog. The word dog shows up here a lot. So you know, the judge wants to see the two quote unquote men that fought back so violently after he tried and hung Calico Jack and the drug pirates that wouldn't fight. They're already dead and gone. So Anne and Mary go in front on the 28th, they reveal their gender. He doesn't give a shit that they're female, they're still pirates. He's still gonna hang them. We plead our belly with the last thing they screamed out because you cannot hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he sends them both back to jail to lay the hang. Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne, brings her back home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four. We're going to count Mary because we don't really know. She has four kids. Dies at the age of 84. Place unknown. Just so you know, some stories say Virginia, others say here. We have no idea. So, Mary Reed dies a year later, 1721, in that Jamaican jail from whatever pirates die from in a Jamaican jail. Use your imagination. Make it romantic. It's probably scurvy. Most articles and books would tell you that it was fever. I'm going to call BS on that one. We're talking pirates. So, two things I left out of this story on purpose. The names of Anne Bonnie's parents. That's the father and the mistress. I also left out the name of Calico Jack's ship. So, those are questions you can ask. Everything else, this is not a prominent English woman. Ask whatever the hell you want to. Poke that bear. Let's do double focuser. Hey. <laughs> double focuser. Can I write that down? Like, that's a great term. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's spread out. Let's see if we can capture anything here. But that red was like almost immediate. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. We don't always Twice. get it. We don't always get it. So, that's the only, what's funny is somebody was struggling with the spirit box like what Jenny's using. So I was trying to give them like a real simple question, like a one syllable answer yeah. that I knew but the answer to. And the answer that came that up on that. Day. I'm like, maybe it's just an anomaly. We went to a whole different location, got the same response. Yes. So it was like, almost like a, hey, Ann, show us what color your hair is. Red. I'm like, sweet. You can't make this stuff up. Back up in that 
I got girls just want to have fun. <laughs> Yeah, like. any numbers or colors coming out of that? Nothing? By the way, the biggest orb I've ever caught has been right here, with that camera. Really? It was by that wall. It came towards my head, stopped, and went up and disappeared. And it was like this big. If we were going to compare it to my head, it came right towards me, stopped for a second, and then went up. Like intelligent. Something's going to pop up in either to, either to 
time to provide those kind of things or give us a cue to the next spot. You have to remember, I'm out here six to seven nights a week. This coast knows what I am. My name usually shows up quite a bit. Um, but anyway, we got a cue of our next location, which is the word poem. We're going to be talking about a poet at our last stop. So it's kind of a crazy thing. That's where I normally kind of take the cue and just kind of say, all right, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, I don't know where this truck is going. It's going around. Um, but I'll keep that running. Let's give you the quick, short answers of the questions that you guys had. So obviously, you guys know what Antoine Terry is, right? So that was an easy one. We did get the red run that showed up almost immediately, so that was kind of cool. Again, we don't always get that. Um, by the way, this is one of the few pictures of Anne Bonnie you can find with a shirt on. The reason why is because she used to bare breast to show men that they were just killed by a woman. So, again, I told you this chick was a badass. Obviously, you've done some research on Anne Bonnie. Uh, I usually show this picture because it obviously shows her in suicide reform. Um, she has a shirt on, which I do get a lot of young boys on this course, and I don't need angry moms. So I don't need to be showing bare-breasted women. Um, the names of her parents, William Cormack, Mary Brennan. So again, wasn't playing another subliminal trick with the Mary. We did have Mary Reed. Mary Brennan was actually a servant for the Cormack home. There's a whole another 30 minute scandal we can talk about, but we're not gonna get into it. Calico Jack. I always like to show you what he looks like because everybody wants to know what they based Johnny Depp's character off of. Calico Jack. Yeah, you're all interested. So they named him that because of the jackets that he wore. They came from British captains that he killed. So. Uh, Jack's father was actually a tailor, so textiles were pretty important to him. Um, so, again, Calico Jack, fancy jacket. The name of his ship that Anne was part of was called the Kingston. I don't expect Kingston to come through a radio station on your spirit boxes. However, the word king would actually suffice in this location. We don't normally get that answer, which is why I keep giving it out. So, again, the word king has shown up periodically over the past two years that I've been coming here. Um, but again, we have to kind of mix, like, what are we working with versus what are they going to be able to tell us. They're going to reach and grab whatever pieces that they can to convey the message. Um, the next location is our last stop, just so you know. Um, cameramen, we will be passing by a pretty cool cemetery, so if you want to get footage of that, that's completely up to you. I won't stop, so you kind of have to keep moving. We did capture a 47 degree difference in that cemetery on the thermal uh, last week, so that was pretty interesting when I found that. Um, and I couldn't make heads or tails of it. So something was moving around in there that was 47 degrees colder than the ambient temperature. So it wasn't just one specific spot, it was multiple. Um, so uh, we're gonna be going up to Washington Park, just so you guys know. And it is about two and a half blocks from here. So it is our last stop, but it is definitely a good creepy story to end our night with. Um, so I'm gonna tell you, it is a little lighter than what I normally see. It's not like, oh my God, there's nothing happening. We do have a lot of really good cues. We have 11, we have fire, we have blue, girls just wanna have fun. You know, those kind of things. I have a couple of things that's going to help tie things together when I'm going through the media tomorrow morning. But I always like to kind of give you guys a gist of like, I'm not Zach Bagans, like where everything's like, oh my God, right? So everything that we're going to be, you know, going through there so far, it's going to be slightly less than average score because I do score everything. So until I find what I find in there. Um, so let's head over to Washington Park. I'm going to definitely keep listening to your spirit boxes. Uh, Mo, just so you know, your device is going to go off because of the parking meter. Mm -hmm. You can ignore yeah. that. Yeah, what did you say to me? We're in George Washington Park. So I'm going to see if anything else pops up relative to Washington while we're here, but we're not going to be discussing it. Um, but it is very interesting. I've had the term Washington show up as we were leaving the powder magazine in the past, so I'm not surprised by the G just showing up. Super weird. Alright, so let's head back over to this one.
out in the field on the field now that you know what you're doing. So here's what I do know. The man was sick for most of his life. So he's obviously born and alive for the Civil War and wanted to fight in the Confederate side. He goes to the battlefield and his friends realize that he's too sick to fight. So he sent him home. He said he'll be the voice of the war. He knew he was a writer and a poet. He started writing poetry about what was going on in the battlefield. He became known as the Laureate of the Confederacy. So, two years after he left the war, he actually had some sons. His son dies at a very young age and has a very specific name. Hopefully, you're going to find out either one of those names. Here about it. So, a few years after that, his college friend calls him up and says, You know what? I know you're working on this piece for the paper down in Charleston. Why don't you come up to my cottage and work on this you know, new poem you're working on? And you can have some kids in He goes out, and that's where he wrote his last book. He writes the folder of brief mortality, meaning personal short life. And he talks, and it lands on the page in a blood cell. And he dies. He had an alligator. Now, that blood stain is on, still on the page. And it looks like a man writing as a solution. They only show this book one day a year at the Charleston Library Society on Halloween. You have to be a member to be able to go see it. However, of course, I found a picture of it on the internet. So I'm very sure you. The guy actually disappeared from us that night was because a woman, the only female in my group, went over to the side of the gate here and offered her hand to be shaken, like as an introduction, and he disappeared. And it made complete sense to us when we realized what time frame this man came from. It was probably disrespectful for a woman to try to shake his hand, like to offer her hand to be shaken. So again, just one of those pieces where you have to think at the time of what's happening around you and why did that happen. We know not in the temple of the faith God has described her faith and all untroubled in her faith. This science is good. This was written in the middle of the Civil War during the Battle of Charleston, basically stating that the Civil War was determined and Charleston will go to triumph in the law. So, we will explore the faith. We have seen uh, well over 100 EMF detection on the device that Miller has. So, I'm going to stay out of the way and kind of see the other things that they have coming up in the report passing through. Um, again, this is our last stop. Ask whatever questions you want, but you can ask the name of the sun, the name of the wife, the name of the sun's birthday. The sun's birthday is very specific as well. They tell you that it is a holiday. Um, so, you kind of see that for what it's worth. You can name it away. Very interesting space in here. You may get clues to other things, which is why you're going to hear a lot of weird stuff. But it might fall down. Friends is relevant, friends is not. You never know. So, we're spread out. Things you can find. Last stop. Let's do this. Mo, you got any numbers coming out of that thing at all? I see you're uh, measuring. No. Uh, pretty big. We're in America. He was American. He's a native, too. So, even you hearing the word Charleston, I don't take those either because you're listening to Charleston radio stations. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, he's like 13 as well. I'll write it down. I don't know how it's relevant. Yeah. Not off the top of my head. Doesn't mean that it's not. One part of the
Sí. Two seven thirty seven eight. It's a reading, it shows up. Okay, it might be picking 24, up seven. the bars. Oh, it's very interesting. Yeah, it fluctuates. Well. This is a cheaper version of that stickman camera. Mm -hmm. And it'll pick up the friend, the college friend that invited him to the cottage often comes up here too. His name is Paul Kane Hamilton. So sometimes we get Paul and Hamilton in the same evening, so it just kind of depends. Um, again, great job. We have a lot of readings that came out of that November segment. So expect a lot of numbers in your guys' analysis at the bottom, so this is our last day. Um, this is kind of give you the expectation of what to expect out of your data tomorrow. So this, you're going to look at it and go, holy cow, what did he say? Um, so first and foremost, I do have a field guide to help you go through your medium. So if you didn't have the thermal imaging camera or the infrared camera, there is a field guide with examples of what to look for. So I gave you guys examples of things that have happened in the past. They might be on there as part of the evidence. I can't remember the exact pieces I put up there. Um, but the spirit box, again, I will always give you my notes. And there might be things in there that aren't relevant for spaces, but they might be relevant to you guys. For every five minutes worth of audio or video, I watch or listen for one minute. What I capture is what I capture. I don't find anything, I just move on to the next five minute entry. Um, I also rate every investigation, so that way I kind of know, like, based on moon phase, what was used. I try to, like, mix up the combination of things, so that way I can kind of see, like, which devices work better together, so forth and so on. It's me learning on top of it. Um, everybody asks me about my investigations. Those are at the very top um, within a podcast listener. So if you're a podcast listener, all of my investigations are there. There's also an accompanying blog post to show you the evidence that we find at that specific location if you're talking about the White House and other um, but I think that about covers all of it, about what you're going to expect tomorrow. Uh, I'm normally done between 12 and 1, just so you know. Um, if it, I have to research something a little bit further, something I found on the spirit box report, it usually takes me closer to 1 o'clock, um, just to kind of make sure I'm getting you know, information accurate for you. You guys are going to be doing vacation things or traveling, so it doesn't really matter. But today's, what's today? What's today? 20th? Yeah. So we're getting closer to the end of the month. Um, there's going to be more tours on top of yours. Your data does stay on the website for an entire year. So again, try to get to it in the next couple of days because I make everything downloadable. So that way you, the videos are going to go to YouTube. Those are easy. Audio pieces will be MP3s. Just right click, download. All of my notes with links in, you know, all of my notes. Just copy paste them into a Word document. It brings the links with it. So that way you don't keep going back to my website and scrolling looking for your date. Um, but again, everything is downloadable. It's nice and easy to find. Yes, sir. I remember once, like, like I was picking up. I was right over there where my dad was. Yeah? Where did you guys get the number? Well, it was like on orange and we went in on red. You think on red? Okay. Were you getting the same type of reading? Like 10 to 15? Yeah. 8, 10. Yeah. Good. They were actually matching up. Um, I didn't get anything that I saw as far as the word list at this location that I was like super excited about. Um, other than that G as we are walking in. Yeah, that's, that was really it. So the word list, you had 74 terms show up. I'm going to say that maybe three or four of them are going to be partial clues to something else. So again, that's 5 to 20% is usually the accuracy rate for that. Um, as I kind of collect your devices, my business card is a little bit different than everybody else's. You're going to basically take out your phone 
and you're going to tap this card to the back of your phone. If you have an iPhone, um, just scan the little QR code. It'll put my contact info into your phone. Um, it actually has my phone number, email address, website, all of that stuff relative to business, so that way you guys know how to get a hold of me. Um, so I'll hand that off to you, and I'll start collecting the links. So I'll that from you. Got it.